Hi guys, welcome to my study compass. In this video, I will be walking you through the past paper, Math P2, variant 2, May-June 2021. Let's get started. The probability that Jane wins a game is 7 over 10. Find the probability that Jane does not win the game. The probability that Jane wins the game plus the probability that she does not win must add up to 1. And so to get the probability that she does not win the game, we subtract 7 over 10 from 1 and this gives us 3 over 10. Jane plays this game 50 times. Find the number of times she is expected to win the game. The number of times she is expected to win is 50 times the probability that she wins any single game, which is 7 over 10. And so this gives us 35. Calculate the fourth root of 0 0.0256. When we type this into the calculator, we get 0 0.4. Emma has 15 mathematics questions to complete. The stem and leaf diagram shows the time in minutes it takes for her to complete each question. Complete the table. Mode. The mode is the most recurring number and that is 16. The stem and leaf diagram has been arranged from the smallest number to the biggest number. And so the median will be the number in the middle of this list and this number is 11. The range is the difference between the biggest number which is 20 and the smallest number which is 3. 20 minus 3 gives us 17. Write down an expression for the range of k consecutive integers. If we have k consecutive integers, let's say 2, 3, 4 and 5, the range of this set of consecutive integers will be the biggest integer, which is 5, minus the smallest integer, which is 2. 5 minus 2 is 3. Notice that since we picked 4 consecutive integers, the value of the range is 1 less than 4. And so if we have k consecutive integers, the value for the range will be k minus 1. Henrik draws this scatter diagram. Put a ring around one correct statement about this scatter diagram. It can be tempting to say that this is a negative correlation. However, there are not many points to be able to come to this conclusion because for all we know, the points may show no correlation. And so this will be our final answer. Each of the four scatter diagrams shows the same set of data. A line has been drawn on each diagram. Complete the statement. The line in diagram blank is the most appropriate line of best fit. Always remember that the general rule of thumb for drawing a line of best fit is that the line must pass through as many points while balancing an equal number of points above and below the line. And so based on this criteria, the line in diagram C is the most appropriate line of best fits. A rhombus has side length 6.5 cm. The rhombus can be constructed by drawing two triangles. Using a ruler and compasses only, construct the rhombus, leaving your construction arcs. One diagonal of the rhombus has been drawn for you. To draw this rhombus, we'll open the compass to a length of 6.5 cm. Stand at one point on the line and inscribe an arc above and below the line. Then, using the same length, we stand at the other point on the line and inscribe another set of arcs above and below the line. From here, all we need to do is to connect the lines of the rhombus. Complete these statements. The reciprocal of 0 0.2 is blank. The reciprocal of 0 0.2 is 1 divided by 0 0.2. 
which you can type into the calculator to get 5. A prime number between 90 and 100 is blank. This number is 97. From this list, write down an irrational number. An irrational number is a number that cannot be expressed as a fraction. And from the list, this number is root 7. A equals B squared over 5C. Find B when A equals 5.625 and C equals 2. So first, let's make B the subject. 5C divides B squared. And so when it crosses to the other side, it goes to multiply A. To clear the square on B, we take square root of both sides of the equation, giving us b equals square root of 5ac. After substituting the values of a and c into the equation, we get b equals 7.5. Without using a calculator, work out 2 over 3 divided by 1 3 over 7. You must show all your working and give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form. In the first step, we need to convert the mixed fraction 1 3 over 7 into an improper fraction. So 7 times 1 is 7 plus 3 is 10 divided by 7. So now we have 2 over 3 times 7 over 10. 2 goes into itself once and goes into 10 5 times. For the numerator, 1 times 7 gives us 7, and for the denominator, 3 times 5 gives us 15. And so our final answer here is 7 over 15. Write 0 0.00654 in standard form. First, we need to move the decimal point to a position after the first non-zero digit, which is 6. And so we have 6.54. Since we moved the decimal point 3 times to the right, we multiply 6.54 by 10 raised to the power negative 3. And so our final answer is 6.54 times 10 raised to the power negative 3. The number 1.467 times 10 raised to the power 102 is written as an ordinary number. Write down the number of zeros that follow the digit 7. To write this as an ordinary number, we'll move the decimal point to the end after 7. To get to this point, we moved the decimal point 3 times to the right. This means that the number of zeros we are going to add after 7 is 102 minus 3, which is 99. Write 0 0.04 as a fraction in its simplest form. Let's call the recurring decimal 0 0.040404x. Now let's multiply x by 10. This gives us 0 0.404040. And when we multiply x by 100, we have 4.040404. So now when we look at these numbers, 100x and x have the exact same pattern after the decimal point. And so we will carry these numbers to the next step. 100x minus x equals 4.0404 minus 0 0.0404. The recurring section cancels out and for the whole numbers, 4 minus 0 gives us 4. 100x minus x is 99x. And so when we make x the subject, we have x equals 4 over 99. The universal set E contains integers greater than 2. Set A contains prime numbers. Set B contains odd numbers. And set C contains square numbers. Describe the type of numbers in the set B complement intersection C. Any number that is not in set B, in other words, that is not an odd number, is an even number. And if these even numbers are also in set C, then they are even square numbers. Complete the set labels on the Venn diagram. Since the universal set only contains integers greater than 2, we can safely say in this case that all prime numbers are also odd numbers. And so set A is a subset of set B. 
and this will be set C. Shade the region D complements union, E intersection F complements. Since we have union here, it means we can shade D complements, which is the region outside D. And in addition, shade the region E intersection F complements, which is the region outside E intersection F. A, B, and C are points on a circle center O. D, A, and D, C are tangents. Angle A, D, C is 44 degrees. Work out the value of x. Code AC makes angle x on the circumference and makes another angle at the center of the circle. This means that the angle at the center will be 2x. The angles between each of the tangents and the radii of the circle is 90 degrees. The sum of all the angles in the quadrilateral AOCD must add up to 360 degrees. And so we have 2x plus 44 plus 90 plus 90 equals 360. When we group like terms, we get 2x equals 136. And when we make x the subject, we get x equals 136 divided by 2, which is 68. The diagram shows a trapezium. The trapezium has one line of symmetry. Work out the area of the trapezium. We know the formula for finding the area of a trapezium. A is the top length of the trapezium, which is 15.4 cm. H is the height, and this is 18.2 cm. B is the bottom length of the trapezium. For this length, the middle section is 15.4 cm. The trapezium has one line of symmetry. And so, if this length is x cm, the other will also be x cm. And so, for B, we have 15.4 plus 2x cm. We can find x by applying Socatoa. This gives us tan 62 degrees equals the opposite, which is 18.2 centimeters, divided by the adjacent, which is x. When we make x the subject, we get 18.2 divided by tan 62 degrees. Hence, the area of the trapezium is equal to half of 15.4 plus 15.4 plus 2x, where x is 18.2 over tan 62 degrees times 18.2. When we type this into the calculator, we get the area as 456 centimeters squared, correct to three significant figures. Complete the table showing information about the congruence of pairs of triangles. The first two rules have been completed for you. All diagrams are not to scale. For these two triangles, they have two equal sides and the angle between these two sides are also equal. Therefore, they are congruent based on the side angle side criteria. In this case, the two triangles have all the three lengths to be equal. Therefore, they are congruent under the side-side-side criteria. For these two triangles, they have the same length. However, these two angles on the sides of the line with given length are not equal. Therefore, these two triangles are not congruent and under the criteria column, we write none. A is the point 5, 7, and B is the point 9, negative 1. Find the length AB. When we apply the distance formula, we have AB equals square root of negative 1 minus 7 squared plus 9 minus 5 squared. This gives us AB equals 8.94, correct to three significant figures. Find the equation of the line AB. The equation of a line can be written in the form y equals mx plus c. So now all we need to do is to find the values of m and c and put them into the equation. 
m is the gradient of the line and by applying the gradient formula we get m equals negative 1 minus 7 divided by 9 minus 5 this gives us m equals negative 2 to find c we need one set of coordinates on the line a b and so if we pick 5 7 we get 7 equals negative 2 times 5 plus c when we make c the subject we get 17 hence the equation of the line a b is y equals negative 2x plus 17 Find the gradient of the line that is perpendicular to the line 3y equals 4x minus 5. We can find the slope of the line 3y equals 4x minus 5 by writing it in the form y equals mx plus c. So we do this by dividing through the equation by 3. This gives us y equals 4 over 3x minus 5 over 3. This means that the gradient m is equal to 4 over 3. The slope of this line times the slope of the line perpendicular to it must be equal to negative 1. This gives us the slope of the perpendicular line as negative 3 over 4 f of x equals x squared minus 25, g of x equals x plus 4. Solve f of g of x plus 1 equals g of f of x. So first, let's find f of g of x plus 1. But before that, let's find g of x plus 1. So for g of x plus 1, wherever we see x in g of x, we take it out and replace it with x plus 1. This gives us x plus 1 plus 4. 1 plus 4 is 5, and so we have x plus 5. For f of g of x plus 1, wherever we see x in f of x, we take it out and replace it with g of x plus 1, which is x plus 5. This gives us x plus 5 squared minus 25. When we expand the brackets and simplify, we get x squared plus 10x. So now that we have f of g of x plus 1, let's find g of f of x. This means that wherever we see x in g of x, we take it out and replace it with f of x, which is x squared minus 25. This gives us x squared minus 25 plus 4. Minus 25 plus 4 is minus 21. So now we have x squared plus 10x equals x squared minus 21. The x squared terms becomes 0 and we are left with 10x equals negative 21. When we make x the subject, we have x equals negative 21 divided by 10, which is negative 2.1. The diagram shows a shape made from an equilateral triangle ABC and a sector of a circle. Points B and C lie on the circle center A. The side length of the equilateral triangle is 12.4 cm. Work out the perimeter of the shape. The perimeter of the shape is equal to the length of BC plus the arc BC. BC is 12.4 cm. By applying the arc length formula, the length of the arc BC is 300 degrees divided by 360 degrees times 2 pi times the radius, which is 12.4 cm. When we type this into the calculator, we get 77.3 cm correct to three significant figures. The diagram shows two sectors of a circle. The major sector is shaded. The area of the major sector is 74.5 cm squared. Calculate the radius of the circle. We've been given the area of the major sector as 74.5 cm squared. By subtracting 41 degrees from 360 degrees, we get the angle of the major sector as 319 degrees. Using these two values, we can find the radius of the circle. When we make the radius the subject of the sector formula, we have square root of 360 degrees times the area of the major sector divided by theta times pi. When we slot in the values of the area and theta, 
and type this expression into the calculator, we get the radius as 5.17 centimeters, correct to three significant figures. Expand and simplify x minus 2 times 2x plus 5 times x plus 3. When we expand the first two brackets, we have 2x squared plus 5x minus 4x minus 10. And when we expand the resulting two brackets, this is what we get. When we group like terms, we have 2x cubed, x squared plus 6x squared, which is 7x squared, negative 10x plus 3x, which is negative 7x, and we have negative 30. And so our final answer here is 2x cubed plus 7x squared minus 7x minus 30. The force of attraction F newtons between two magnets is inversely proportional to the square of the distance d centimeters between the magnets. When d equals 1.5, F equals 48. Find an expression for F in terms of d. In mathematical terms, let's write F is inversely proportional to d squared. This means that F is equal to a constant which we are going to call k times 1 over d squared. We can find the value of k by substituting the values of d and f given in the question. This gives us 48 equals k divided by 1.5 squared. When we make k the subject, we have 48 times 1.5 squared, which is 108. Therefore, the equation becomes f equals 108 divided by d squared. When the distance between the two magnets is doubled, the new force is n times the original force. Work out the value of n. When the distance between the magnets is doubled, the force is equal to 108 divided by 2 times d all squared. 2 times d squared is 4d squared, and so this gives us the new force as 1 over 4 times 108 divided by d squared. This means means n is equal to 1 over 4. Simplify 2x squared minus 5x minus 12 divided by 3x squared minus 12x. For the numerator, we can rewrite negative 5x as negative 8x plus 3x. For the denominator, when we factor out 3x, we are left with x minus 4. For the first two terms in the numerator, when we factor out 2x, we are left with x minus 4. And for the final two terms, when we factor out 3, we are left with x minus 4. We can rewrite this as 2x plus 3 times x minus 4. x minus 4 cancels out in the numerator and the denominator, and we are left with 2x plus 3 divided by 3x. Find all the solutions of 4 sine x is equal to 3 for x is greater than and equal to 0 degrees and less than and equal to 360 degrees. When we make sine x the subject, we have sine x equals 3 over 4. To help us find the full range of solutions, we need to find the value of an angle alpha, which is going to serve as the key to help us to do that. The value of this angle alpha alpha is equal to sine inverse of the positive value of 3 over 4, which is the same as 3 over 4. When we type this into the calculator, we get 48.6 degrees correct to one decimal place. From here, we need to draw the quadrants. Since sine x is 3 over 4, which is a positive value, we are going to measure and mark the angle alpha in the quadrants where sine is positive. When we go around the quadrant the first time, we have the first value of x as 48.6 degrees. And when we go around the quadrant the second time, we get the second value of x as 180 degrees minus minus 48.6 degrees which is 131.4 degrees and so our final answers are 48.6 degrees 131.4 degrees solve 1 over x plus 1 plus 9 over x plus 9 is equal to 1 
To clear out the denominators in the equation, you multiply through the equation by the LCM, which is x plus 1 times x plus 9. When we do this, we get 1 times x plus 9 plus 9 times x plus 1 equals 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 9. When we expand the brackets, this is what we get. By moving all the terms to one side of the equation and grouping like terms, we have x squared minus 9 equals 0. x squared minus 9 is a difference of two squares, which means that it can be factorized easily. We can rewrite the equation as x squared minus 3 squared equals 0. By applying the difference of two squares formula, this can be rewritten as x plus 3 times x minus 3 equals 0. When we equate x plus 3 to 0, we get x equals negative 3. And when we equate x minus 3 to 0, we get x equals 3. And so our final answer here is x equals 3 or x equals negative 3. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. See you in the next video. Bye guys.